Welcome to the Cecil Hurt Show. I am your host, Chris Ratty. The NCAA ruling is in, and Cecil is here to talk about it, answer your questions. No further ado, welcome to the show, Cecil. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good. How are you? Great. So, I mean, let's just get it right out of the way. Red Sox go for the sweep tonight against the Yankees. <laughs> I'm playing well. All right. So we have it. The NCAA is ruling in the University of Alabama. Textbook disbursement case. No more speculation. It's out there. 201 students involved, 16 teams. The Alabama ordered to vacate 21 football wins. The $43,900 they're fined and probation for three years. Bunch of teams involved. 16, although that's certainly important and it certainly is connected to the failure to monitor, but I think the real focus is on the 22 student athletes who, who intentionally tried to manipulate the system. The others... Um, again, institutionally, it's a violation. I'm not trying to say it's not, but you sure. know, they were just handed materials, and they truly either didn't know or, or just assumed that if they were being handed them, it was okay. Yeah, um, you know, they were supplemental materials. Um, so, so while men's basketball and gymnastics and those softball and sports like that are mentioned, there's no indication that anybody connected with those programs, tried to intentionally get around the system sure. and, and run up big bills and, and get books for other people, Yeah, uh, which I think is the, the core um, and, and is what landed football track tennis in the most in the most hot water. So do you think, and, and Rounder asked this off the bat, and I mean, do you think the ruling was too strong, too weak, or just right? And of course, no scholarship players were touched, so it's not... Looking, so right, affecting it's a, the, the, the future of the program, right, so to speak. Right. It, it, you know, there's certainly whether well, the penalties are too strong depends on your perspective. You know, if you're a, a past player who was involved in, in some of those wins, you know, great wins in, in 2005, Tennessee, Florida, Florida Cotton win. Bowl. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's that's a pretty harsh penalty to be told that that's that didn't really happen um, yeah. and, and have it vacated. Um, if you're a current Alabama player, um, if you're an Alabama recruit, if you're an Alabama coach going forward, you know, you're certainly glad that you don't have any sanctions to worry about and you're not threatened with the loss of a bowl game. You're not threatened with the loss of scholarships that would keep you from signing if you're a coach that would keep you from signing a recruit that you want to sign. Yeah. Um, so that's a positive, and I think that's the, the positive that most Alabama fans will look at. Um, so I've, I've tried to make the distinction. The distinction today, I, I don't think that, you know, in terms of, of football, which most people care about, and, and, you know, in terms of going forward, it's certainly not bad, not yeah. a bad day at all. Um, but just because something's not bad doesn't mean that it's not serious. Sure. And the situation is when you have, it, it's certainly possible to have a violation that goes undetected or two, but when it goes on over the course of three academic years and involves as many People, even if you just use the 22 figure, if you just say it involves 22 people, um, you know, that's a lot, and, and that's a, that truly is a failure to monitor. Uh, Sports Dame brings up this question, and it's, it's about the probation, um, that they would receive three years probation, but then mention the five-year death penalty window for being Repeat a repeat offender. Window, right. Could you elaborate as to what exactly does that mean from the NCAA standpoint? Does that basically mean Alabama's on probation for five years? No, because probation, the way the NCAA uses it, is an administrative term that encompasses a, a lot of compliance seminars, a lot of respond, extra reporting that Alabama has to do. So, so the probation is three years. But in, in terms of what fans perceive and in terms of what has teeth in it, that tends to be the repeat violator. Uh, which subjects you to en enhanced penalties if you appear in front of the committee, which Alabama was in this time, and which Paul D., the chairman of the Committee on Infractions, referenced. Um, and that goes on for five years. So I think the best way for for fans to think of it is that, that they're in the window for five years. But p probation, people get that mixed up, and it is confusing. It's made more confusing by the fact that last time Alabama's probation was five years and the window was five years. Um, but, but probation really... Uh, 
affects the inst it's internal to the institution, whereas um, the repeat violator window is, is tough for everybody. We've got everything on Tide Sports to, to, to check out if uh, from everything from the PDF to the, the entire report. We've got the audio of the entire teleconference from today, and now we've got Mal's, uh, Mal Moore's press conference up. Talk a little bit. How, what did he say? How did they address you guys? Well, I just um, presented us with a statement. They didn't answer any questions. Okay. So um, what you see is, is really essentially all there was. They said they wouldn't take questions because of the possibility that they would appeal. I think that that's a, an open question at this point. It's an expensive proposition to appeal, but... but um, yeah, I think they felt like the third year of probation was was might might be excessive, and certainly that that some or all of the vacation of football victories might be excessive. Uh, you know, but Mal Moore and, and Dr. Witt both expressed disappointment. Um, they they both seemed you know focused on the on the penalties. They both talked about how Alabama, as soon as they found out, acted. You know, and the NCAA echoed this the, the compliance end of it, I think, fulfilled their responsibilities very well and did a good job. Um, but, you know, I think there's also disappointment out there. They didn't address the disappointment that this happened again, you know, that, that Alabama was in this situation. And I think that is disappointing. And the appeal actually came up in a couple different ways from some of the forum members. Teague saying, is there any chance an appeal could get the wins back? Looking for a win, shouldn't UA appeal the game situation as both Oklahoma and Florida State? I think that, did? I, I, I think that um, if there's an appeal, that's what it'll be. Um, uh, they they probably wish they had seen the ruling in the Florida State case because Oklahoma in 2007 did get their wins back on appeal, but the appeal standard was changed in 2008 to, to a higher standard of, of finding um, error in the Committee on Infractions original decision and it, you know, it has to be it has to be much more egregious than just you know a, a variation of interpretations uh, so I think they'd like to see how that Florida State case came down and really don't have an option to do that um, I, I do think in Oklahoma's case um, although the season that in which they had to vacate nine wins was, was not a great season by Oklahoma's standards I think they felt like at the time, they had nothing to lose. And I think in Florida State's case, um, I don't know that they would have appealed were it not for Bobby Bowden's situation. I think that that's a, uh, you know, such a source of pride for them that he would have to vacate 14 wins, just like Nick Saban would have to vacate yeah. five wins on, on his Alabama record from 2007, make him um, make his record at Alabama 14 and eight now instead of instead of 19 and eight, mm -hmm. which is where it stands. Um, no, you, you, Dr. Witt talked about um, owing the student, owing the student athlete who participated um, at least the courtesy of considering an appeal. Um, so yeah, that's what you would appeal: length of probation and, and vacation of victories. Uh, I, I, but I'm not sure which way they'll go because I'm, I'm not sure. If, in some ways, if they want to say, because, because although those things are harsh and they, they probably do merit the consideration of, of an appeal. At the same time, the committee on infractions could have been much harsher on Alabama than they were, yeah. given the circumstances of the case. I think most people agree with that. And Crimson Phoenix asks, would an appeal do more harm than good in some cases? I don't know that it does any harm. You know, in a perfect world, it doesn't. If you're, if you are uh, perceived as as um, petulant or or you know challenging the, the authority of the Committee on Impressions, which I don't think Alabama would be, but I guess that it, it could. You know, it's supposed to be a, a straightforward process, but, but at the same time, I thought the Committee on Infractions, you know, really, really treated Alabama about as fairly as you could expect. Sure. Uh, 007 Titer wants to know some simplicity here. What exactly does it mean to vacate a win? If what he's thinking is correct, it's not forfeiting games right. and giving the other team the victory. It's right. pretty much just like erasing that entire right. game from the record. Right. The, the best example I can give um, is, is Bob, the Bobby Bowden example. When, when Florida State vacates those wins, Bobby Bowden now has 14 less wins, but he doesn't have 14 more losses. They don't mm -hmm. flip from wins to losses. They just disappear. Mm -hmm. So, so 
know, the, the teams that Alabama has to forfeit to, Florida in 2005, Texas Tech in 2005, that they don't get another win, um, Alabama just, it's just doesn't, as if it doesn't play. It's and just, if the games are basically Alabama did not nullified, participate. do the stats of the players who are not associated get erased? Uh, I, I think that um, that's an interesting question. I'll have to go back and, and look. I think the football stats will stand. It's just too confusing to... to to take John part. Parker Wilson, you know, who, as far as we know, was eligible for all the games, yeah. erase his career stats. You know, what does that mean? That's I mean, his career stats or his career stats. I, there's um, now now for a tennis player, a track say a track athlete competed in the NCAA championships, they'll vacate that. They'll yeah, vacate it says here individual records in men's tennis and track. Yeah. So must so be in a team sport, it's usually just a team vacation. Sure. Um, S. Smith General, was the punishment negotiated or just handed down? Was there anything in there? There's just once you finish your, your hearing, then the committee just makes a decision. You yeah. know, there's no give and take. No give and take. Anything else that... Uh, Not supposed to be. Sure. <laughs> Stu Bowen asked, and a lot of people wanted to know this as well, what competitive advantage was gained in the eyes of the NCAA, meaning those, you know... Now, Paul D. addressed that. And, and his answer to that question was when that ineligible player steps on the field, it doesn't matter if he scores a touchdown or kicks a field goal, um, you know, he shouldn't be out there. And, um, you know, it's not that he was illegally recruited, it's, it's, but, but they did view the textbooks as an extra benefit, just as if, you know, he were, you know, getting a, a new Ferrari. I mean, you know, probably not with the same severity, but, but, under the letter of the law, the same outcome in terms of vacation of victories. So um, once they're ineligible and you play them, that's the competitive advantage, again, in the eyes of the NCAA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they shouldn't have been playing, and they played. Um, and if they weren't better than the guy they were replacing, they wouldn't have been playing. So you're playing somebody who's better than the other guy because he's better than the other guy, and he wasn't eligible. So, sure. and, and there's a reason for that. You know, there, there's a reason that that rules in place because, because um, you know, textbooks, it's easy to say, how could that be an extra benefit? But, you know, if you, if you open that up, then, then you know, if, if a textbook's not an extra benefit, then is a dorm room an extra benefit? Is a meal at the dorm? You know, you, and so you, it's wide open. So, I, again, I understand where the NCAA is coming from on that. So Alabama on probation again. Let's, what if something happens? What's going to, what, well, yeah. You know, Explain I that death be, penalty a little bit. Yeah, I hate to be hypothetical about it because you know you're talking about what yeah. happened and what's the institution's response, what's the institution's institution's responsibility. In every case, is different. Yeah. You know, are, are we talking about an institutional matter? Or are we talking about a, a booster situation, which is which is can be different, or it can be just as Alabama's responsible for its boosters as as well, and it needs to do a good job of educating its fans his supporters on what all the ramifications are, whatever has been done to educate him, it needs to be it needs to be reinforced. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's gotta be doubled, it's gotta be doubled. That goes for the athletes, goes for the fans, you know, goes for the administrators. Um, they're gonna have to spend more time and more resources on compliance. Mm -hmm. So um, but but to say, you know, what happens if this or if that, you know, every case is different. And so we just have to you'd sit here and speculate on every possibility, what if A, what if B. Um, None of them would be good. And so and the, the best thing to do is just not to not to go there. And you brought up the point in the beginning. There really is a, a, a divide in in the forums between those that say this is a slap on the wrist. Let's just walk away and we're happy we got what we got, and others that think it's too harsh. And I put up a poll, and immediately it was split basically down the middle. In fact, sixty to seven percent were skewed more towards the too harsh yeah, side. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. And people don't like to, to vacate victories. I mean, that's that's why you that play. Florida win, win was pretty yeah, spectacular. Florida win or that Tennessee win. I mean, there's paintings around town. You know? Yeah. You can go and, and see that. And, and so, you know, nothing takes away the emotion of that. I mean, if you were there, if you played in that game or you yeah. were a fan and you were at that game, you know what happened and you know who won. But, but at the same time, you know, officially, um, you didn't win it. Uh, you know, you're being told you didn't win it fair and square. Like the question about the competitive advantage, people can agree or disagree with that, but that's what the official record reflects. That it mm -hmm. wasn't done completely above board, and nobody likes to hear that. Yeah. All right. So now we wait. We wait to see if uh, the university does decide to appeal, and 
on the horizon, not too far away. July's right around the corner. You're looking at SEC Media Days down there at the end, and then all the madness begins. So we get a little bit of downtime, but we'll find ways to still uh, take some questions from yeah, the, the forums. Sure, and, absolutely. And mix um, it up. So I think it's it's people are excited to get the uh, get this season underway. I think so. I think that, that um, just as, as Coach Saban talked today about looking forward, Dr. Witt talked about moving forward. I think probably the fans are ready to move forward. To sure. Uh, well, hash, it, hash this out for a few days and then get on with it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Thanks, man. I'll talk mm-hmm. to you later. Go Red Sox.